So earlier today, there was an article that went live. It was uh, categorized as a talking point around Nintendo and if they would abandon the Switch concept going into next generation. And it sounds weird to a lot of us that Nintendo would move away from something that's worked so well for them, but it's Nintendo and, uh, well, they've nintendo in the past. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave Plus channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So first, let's head over here. This was posted up on Nintendo Life, and it got people talking quite a bit online in their comment section on Twitter, really just around the headline itself, where they said, will Nintendo abandon the Switch concept for its next console? I mean, we're, we're coming up on the point where we do at least start to have conversations around what Nintendo is going to do next. Typically, when we get into like that sixth year, we expect to hear from Nintendo what they're going to do with their next generation uh, console or the next generation handheld. But this is a very different time for Nintendo. They themselves believe that they're roughly halfway through the Switch's life, which means we could have another four, even five years of the Switch. That doesn't necessarily mean the system we have now, but the Switch brand overall before, I guess, they exit this generation into the next and maybe build on the Switch concept. But the thing that's being pulled from here, specifically the quotation in this article is from that Nintendo Investors Q&A, where President Shintaro Furukawa answered a question about that 20XX next generation category that they had on their cards that they presented to investors, where he said, we're not able to comment about the next game system at this time. With regards to the next game system, we are considering many different things, but as far as the concept and launch time are concerned, there is nothing we can share at this time. And it's mostly pointed out they're being very vague here. And yeah, obviously, they're not going to be like, oh, wait, you know what? Hang on. We got a whole pamphlet around what this next generation system is going to be. They don't want to damage the momentum that the Switch currently has because they can't meet the needs of demand right now with how many Switches they're able to produce. So why would you just start talking about the next generation system there on the spot? You want to, of course, be very mindful of the marketing that goes into that because... Nintendo hasn't been the greatest at going from one generation to the next in terms of marketing. I mean, the Wii to the Wii U was pretty bad. At least the Wii U to the Switch was better, but like it couldn't really get any worse there, right? So based on how they've done with their trends, it's like Wii to Wii U wasn't good. Wii U to Switch was good. So a lot of people are thinking, okay, Switch to the next one is probably going to be bad, at least based on their trends. But I think Nintendo at least has a, a pretty good path in front of them when it comes to this, as long as they don't try to get too creative. They don't try to get, like, overcomplicate things here. And this article mostly points back to the Wii, to the Wii U, where they did overcomplicate things. Like, I think at the time, myself, and I'm sure many people, thought, okay, if Nintendo just takes the Wii, makes it stronger, and just creates the Wii HD or something like that, it would probably be fine. Like, it would go on a next-gen system, and it would do pretty well. But they came out with the Wii U. The marketing was all over the place. People thought it was a tablet. They didn't know there was a console with it. Seriously, I dealt with this all day, every day, for months, like, leading up to the console's release. People had no idea what exactly it was. Is it an attachment from my Wii? Is it, the, Nintendo really lost sight of who they sold Wiis to uh, during that generation and what they were trying to present for the Wii U bit different now with the Switch because the hybrid concept is what's selling the system. Like, to people who are actually buying games that aren't just Wii Sports. Pair that with Nintendo being, I would say, much more conservative than they've ever been with a lot of their business decisions now. And I don't think they're going to go off the rails and try to do something completely different. Also, they've merged their console and their handheld lineup and their development teams together. So to then break them back apart for potentially creating two systems because I don't think Nintendo would want to move away from this hybrid concept with just a box that you put in your living room and not have a handheld next to it. And you also have to remember, Nintendo, especially during this generation, has explored other avenues of releasing their games. Specifically, they kind of already have a handheld. It's the cell phone. They've been releasing a lot of games. And while it kind of appears on the surface that they've pulled back from cell phone games, They've actually continued to update their current ones rather than try to put out a ton of these games all at once and continue to just tack on more and more and more. They've kind of sat back and updated the ones that they already have. Yes, they did Pikmin, and that's at least out now. We don't have any data around if it, like how much money it's making or anything yet, but 
I mean, if you take a look at their games now that they have out, we have this chart here from Sensor Tower. Take a look at Fire Emblem Heroes. That's been quietly making a ton of money for Nintendo. It's coming up on a billion dollars of overall glo global player spending. That's a lot of money to make from a phone game. And yes, they have to, to update it, but Fire Emblem Heroes is uh, very lucrative for Nintendo. And that's on a platform that they didn't have to R&D and create. They built the game, a gotcha style game, put it on the phone, and they've just been collecting money ever since. If you look at Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, $255 million. Same with Mario Kart Tour. Dragalia Lost, you know what? That's not bad for it not being like a Mario or Fire Emblem characters or, or Animal Crossing. For it not being a major Nintendo IP, that's, that's pretty good. And then Super Mario Run was just one that they sold for 10 bucks. And, uh, well, Dr. Mario World's already shut down, so there you go. Basically, my point is Nintendo has already leaned into the idea of, okay, we don't necessarily need a dedicated handheld device if we can just continue to make money from something like uh, cell phones that have obviously proven pretty successful for them with some games. Not all. Obviously, Super Mario Run didn't go over the best for them, and then they had to kind of pivot and lean more into what phones are used to, which are free-to-play gotcha mechanic style games. Also, Nintendo likes to collect a ton of information as people sign up for Nintendo accounts and, of course, through a ton of different surveys throughout the year. This was a chart that they had shared early on. I think it was after the first year. But you can see immediate reactions from customers for the Switch favored the handheld or tabletop side. And that kind of makes sense based on the Wii U was their home console, didn't sell nearly as well as the 3DS, which was their handheld. If you bring those two audiences together, yeah, they're going to favor more towards the handheld side because that's what they've mostly been playing with Nintendo. But even playing in both modes is used quite a bit. It just certainly skews more towards the handheld undocked side. Basically, the data that I'm sure Nintendo has continued to collect seems to keep pointing towards the idea of this hybrid concept being the big winner for them. And I expect them to actually build on this as they go along. I think the Switch name will continue on and it'll just be a brand that they continue to release systems under, whether it's something like a Switch Lite or who knows what the, what would they name the next one. They have like the Switch OLED, but they could of course come up with different names. Sure, they could use the Switch Pro moniker. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if that happens or new Nintendo Switch, Switch 2. I just think they've built this brand up so well now, very, very quickly, that it would be strange for them to abandon it. But even if they did and they came out with a new one, I mean, when the Switch was first unveiled, that didn't even go over that well, really. If you take a look here, for example, Nintendo investors switch off after console reveals and their shares tumble. This was back in October when they first presented what the Switch was going to be and their plans for that generation. And it wasn't just... Uh, Nintendo investors is people online. I mean, a lot of people, even people who are sold now on it and are like really gung ho for the Switch, they looked at it and they're like, I, I don't know about this one. There are a lot of people who wanted it to just be a box, like, you know, just another console. And Nintendo decided to go in a completely different direction. So it wouldn't, I guess it wouldn't shock me if they decided to do something completely different after the Switch. It just, to me, it wouldn't be the smart move. But sometimes, like I said, Nintendo likes the Nintendo. Also, it's worth pointing out that if Nintendo decided to go a completely different route, different form factor, uh, medium instead of cartridges, all, all these things, right? They would kind of get to just avoid the idea of backwards compatibility altogether. And then they could port some of their games from the Switch to this new platform. And yeah, we expect the next system to be a more powerful switch, maybe add things on like uh, connectivity wherever you are, like a, like 5G or just something there, right? Just different things to continue building on the, with the convenience of the switch. And yes, have all of our games now backwards compatible. But as I've said many times, it's Nintendo. And when we think we can predict what they're going to do, they just go completely left off the rails and we get surprised all over again. But to me, this one's a pretty safe bet. I think the switch hybrid concept is here to stay. But let me know what you guys think about all of this down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.